I beg of you, we are not telling you to pay tight because we want your money. When you don't tight, you risk your life. Listen, I'm a deep teacher of the world. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your wealth. When you are not a tighter, any attack on you can take your life. Christians are not required to tithe. In fact, Christians are not required to give any money at all to their local church. Christians are called upon in the New Testament to give to those who are in need. Now, let's get right into this subject, the subject of tithing. First of all, people like to point out that Abraham, or they like to argue at least, that Abraham tithed from his income. But that's actually not true. Abraham never tithed from his income. He gave 10% once from the spoils of war, and the other 90% went to the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. So he got nothing. It wasn't any part of his income at all. Um, and uh, there's no evidence whatsoever that he tithed from his actual income. You're tithing. You're tight. Uh, oh, we have a subject debate on tithing. Number two, you're tight. Study your Bible, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Let's see what the tithe attracts. Malachi 3 and verse 10. I'm going to explain some things to you. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here with, see the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out what? Now listen, 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 listen. If you are not paying tithe, you are not an unbeliever. You are still a Christian. If you are not paying tithe, you see, working with God is not transactional. It's not tied to, if you don't do this, God won't do this. If you don't, no, 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 no. If you don't do this, it is yourself you are cheating. I will explain to you. There are laws and tenets that God has established that work on the earth. Not in the heavens. He works on the earth. When you refuse to become a practitioner, to instigate what will trigger those laws to work in your favor, you deny yourself. For example, the, 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 the polytechnic is there. For you to become a student, there are certain requirements. Now, that is between you and your academics, not the institution. The institution has nothing to lose. What is your tithe? Your tithe is not a, is not a contribution. When you study about the Bible about your tithe, do you realize that God did not say you should give him your tithe? He said you should pay it, pay. That means it's not yours. You're not giving him. He doesn't tell you thank you for bringing your tithe. He says pay. You know what he told the priest to do? He said, take the tithe from them. It's a difference. As far as God is concerned, a tenth part of all that you receive is not yours. But if you take it, he won't fight you. But he asks the question, will a man rob God? Take it and keep it. But it will keep producing losses in your life. When I see someone who says, we have had this shop for such a long time, we are not making any progress. I just wonder. Do you give your tithe? Yes, I do. You don't. You say, I do. No, you don't. Go back and sit down and think through it. Whew. You know, in the church, we, we talk about uh, robbers outside. There are many God robbers inside the house of God. I don't teach tithe, but I teach about the tithe. And I do not teach that Christians should pay tithe but I'm not going to stop a Christian from giving tithe I cannot stop a Christian from giving tithe because tithe means tenth if your generosity is ten percent I cannot say don't give your ten percent that is the level of your generosity or the revelation of your stinginess Hello, my brothers and sisters. Uh, before we get to our topic of discussion for today, I just want to ask you guys to do us a favor by liking this video and also subscribe to the channel because that really helps us a lot. So when it comes to the issue regarding tithes and offerings, I personally think that it's one of those topics that we will never have a unique take on it. Like different people will interpret it differently. Even men of God, they will interpret the whole thing differently. So my whole point is uh, you who is giving the tithe to understand the reason for why you are 
doing it. That's my whole take. Because for far too long, men of God um, um, have told their Christian that if they pay tithe or if they do offerings, God will shower them with physical wealth and prosperity. I do believe that that is a big lie. Okay? You can say that when you do it, you are fulfilling a spiritual engagement with God. That is understandable by me. But for someone to claim that if you pay tithe or if you do offerings, all of a sudden, all your poverty or all your strugglings will all just go away. To me, that is an over-exaggeration of the whole thing. It's just a fraud. It is just a fraud. You can hear a man of God whom I really respected, like Pastor Chris, saying that if you do not pay tithe, you might not prosper, that that business you've been running, the reason why the business has not been successful, why the business is not making any profit, is because you haven't been paying your tithe, or maybe you've just paid not up to the amount that was required of you to pay. Now, I personally think that statements like these are very deceiving. If that were to be the case, if the reason your business is not succeeding is because you did not pay tithe or you did not give the 10% that is expected of you. Then what about the unbelievers? What about people who do not believe in your God? Why are their businesses succeeding? Why are they successful? Maybe you should ask yourself that question. Because if the whole premises of your business not being successful or you not being successful in whatever activity that you are engaged with is as a result of you not paying your tithe, then what about people who are unbelievers? Why are they succeeding? Why are they successful? You see, this is the problem I have with today's religion. Because what they do, the men of God, some of them, let me put it that, let me be clear, some of them, what they do is they always fine-tune the Bible to suit their narrative. They preach the Bible according to what they want to achieve from the members. Because you have to understand, right, that no matter how much tithe and offerings that you do in your church, if you have no idea about business, if you have no skills on how to run a business, if you don't know how to buy and how to sell, that business will not prosper. No matter how much tithe and donations you do in the house of the Lord, if you do not have good bargaining skills, if you are not a good salesperson, if you cannot convince people to buy a product, no matter how much money you donate, no matter how much percentage you give to the church as your tithe, you won't succeed. You won't succeed. So, a man of God like Pastor Chris saying all this to me is such a, a, a shame. It's really a shame. Because I believe that the only reason Pastor, Pastor Chris is as successful as he is is not because he's paying tight. It's because he is a good preacher. Okay? He is a good salesperson. He has been very good in selling the word of God to people. So people have bought into the product which he is selling. That is Christianity. At the end of the day, everyone is a salesperson. We are all trying to sell something to somebody. So if you're not good at being a salesperson, 
you cannot sell anything, whether you pay tithe or not. In order for you to have a successful relationship with your spouse, you must be able to sell them the dream they are willing to buy. In order for you to have a good relationship with your children, you must be able to sell them the dream that the, 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 your children are willing to buy. Same goes to your boss, your employees, and everyone you are dealing with. You must be a good salesperson to say anything to anyone. So, Pastor Chris is talking here that the reason why your business might have been failing is because you didn't pay your tithe or maybe you didn't pay the exact amount that was required of you. It's just a very, very low, low thing to say. And then talking about the other men of God, well, I believe that, well, this is my own take from everything they said. And like I've always said before, if you want to pay tight, do it. If you want to do donations, do it. If you want to help the poor and the needy in your community, do it. That is really good. In fact, giving is a very, very good character to have. Giving is a very, very good activity to be involved with. Giving is always very, very great. But do it for the right reasons. But do it with the right knowledge in mind. Giving is something you do without expecting anything in return. Be it tithes, be it offerings, be it donations, or be it um, just giving to people in your community. Always give, but do not expect anything in return. If you do it that way, you will never be disappointed. So I hope my opinion or my take on the whole tithe and offering is very clear. But you guys out there, you guys can let me hear your take in the comment section below. Because I always I like hearing what you guys have to say. Tell me what you think. After listening to all these preachers and all give their own explanation or their own take on tithe and offering, what do you think? Share that thought and opinion with us in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And also, don't forget to like this video, share it, subscribe to the channel because that will help us a lot and we shall ever be grateful to you.